Hey, this Russell of Hotels coming live at you just for a couple of moments. Hey, did you guys know I did hotel site selection? I'm not sure if you know that or not, but um, a lot of people know me for the social media piece as well as uh, my own podcast, but I also do hotel site selection. So what I did was come up with this hotel site inspection checklist uh, just for people that may want to know what to look for uh, during the site inspection. I mean, you may not, but I'm going to do it anyway. So if anything, it's going to help me out, right? It's going to help me organize some things. So thank you so much for joining, and let's jump into it. But anyway, you guys know that meeting planners, I mean, I work with meeting planners um, that are having meetings, conventions, conferences, retreats, whatever. Um, So 10 rooms or more, right? That's considered a group. So that's where I get involved. So meeting planners will hire me to assist them, uh, meaning they may not have time to do the, the hotel site selection portion of it. So that's my expertise. So I kind of just jump in and help them with that. But as we know, meeting planners all, it's not one size fits all for meeting planners. So um, some of them are heavily into just the meeting aspect of it. Maybe some of them want to elevate it food and beverage experience for their attendees. Uh, Maybe some of them want the guest room to be featured, meaning they're more concerned about the guest room than the meeting space. Or some of them may... Um, they may want a, a hotel that's close to, to restaurants because for the attendees downtime, they may want them to, you know, partake in what's going on in the local area around the hotel, or maybe some of them may just want a kind of a remote site where they don't want people to leave. They want a captive audience. So it just depends on the meeting planner. But one thing I've learned over the years is that you have to ask the meeting planner or the person that you're working for or being a consultant for that, you know, what is it that's important to you? So you have to listen to your client. Um, They will tell you, him or her will tell you exactly what they're looking for. Um, And you're you're hoping that they're being transparent, but at the same time, you want to be transparent with them when it comes to everything. I mean, I'm as transparent as they want me to be as far as contracts, you know, things that are in the contract, uh, hotels that I'm looking at, is it a four star versus a four diamond versus a five diamond or a three diamond? Uh, whatever they're looking for, that's my job to make sure they're provided with, you know, those options. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but anyway, let's jump into the hotel checklist. Number one, be thorough and make sure your phone is charged and ready for photos and videos. Now, wait a minute. Somebody's going to say, that's the first one? Well, yeah, it is because, well, and I'm going off of what I do. Excuse me, let me move my head over here. Um, But what I do is make sure, yeah, my phone is charged and ready for videos and pictures because how I get organized or how I organize myself is that I take photos um, with the caption of whatever that hotel is. That way, if I'm looking at five hotels in one day, I can go back and scroll through my my, um, photos in my phone and say, okay, this is this front desk, this is that restaurant, you know, from Hotel A or Hotel B or Hotel D or whatever it is. So it's easy to to be organized for me if I take pictures. And, you know, I, you guys also know that I post things on social media anyway, so it kind of serves two purposes. It serves a purpose for the meeting and it serves a purpose for my social media postings as well. So I always make sure my char- my phone is charged up and ready to go. Second one, Walk in the attendee's shoes. What does that mean? So the attendee is going to be walking around the hotel, right? So wouldn't it be good if you, as the hotel site selection person, kind of did those same things, kind of put your feet in those person's shoes, and you walk from the parking to the front desk. You walk from, walk from the front desk to the elevator, from the elevator to their room, from the room back down the elevator to the meeting space, to the restaurant to the spa, to the pool. And that way you can talk intelligently with your uh, client about, okay, I did this, I did that. And I understand that, you know, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that. So it's going to take about five minutes for you to do this and blah, 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 blah. So now you have examples, real life examples about, you know, how long it's going to take you to get down from the elevator bank to the meeting space. So you can share that with your client, right? So you want to make sure that you're making it as easy as possible because guess what? Your client may not be there with you, okay? So they may not have that firsthand experience, but if you're there and you happen to to walk the space the same way that the client would or the attendee would, well, then, hey, you're ahead of the game, I think. Number three, 
find out what's happening in and around the venue. Now, that's like renovations, right? Is the hotel planning renovations, okay? If they are, you want to make sure you know when that date is starting and when it's going to end. What's the estimated completion date, okay? Add 30 days to whatever it is, just so you know. But um, we, we want to make sure that it doesn't conflict with any dates. I mean, if it's, I mean, it's up to the client if they want to still have it. If you say they're due to, they're going to start a renovation and they're due to finish it maybe the week that you're coming in. And I've had this situation happen before. I was on the hotel side where we weren't finished and a client was expecting the hotel to be finished and we weren't. So, I mean, she piled up the number of, of concessions that we we're going to give her, which rightfully so, that's what we should have done, right? That's what we ended up doing. But you know, it's, it's always good to, like I said, to ask that extra question, make sure there's nothing scheduled, uh, make sure that's in the agreement, and then move forward from there. But it can be a, a touchy situation if, you know, renovation is supposed to be done, completed at a certain time, and it's not. Uh, just make sure you have your list of concessions if, if that is the case. So find out what's going on. What about outside of the hotel? What's going on outside of the hotel? Are there restaurants in the area, things in walking in distance, and any issues out there? Is there a homeless situation or whatever? Those things are important that you look to see if that's the situation. Because like I said, you want to be transparent with your client, right? So if you're not walking the space or walking outside or driving the area, then you have no idea what the heck's going on. So just make sure that you do, you do that, okay? Number four check out standard guest rooms where most attendees will sleep. Now, if you're staying in a hotel, which I can, which I could um, recommend that you do, you know, prior to making a decision on, you know, am I going to refer this hotel to my client or that hotel? I always make sure I stay the night there at least one night um, just to make sure I understand what's going on. Make sure I sleep in the same type of bed that they would sleep. So, I always get offered, and I'm sure a lot of meeting professionals get this as well, where, where the hotel will offer you, oh, we'll give you a, a suite for that night. Well, no, I don't, I don't need a suite. I need a room that the, 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 that most attendees will be sleeping in, okay? So that's a standard room. So that's what I'm looking for, right? Because I want to be able to make sure that bed is comfortable. Everything's in working order. Um, I'm going to order room service. I don't want any special treatment for the most part <laughs> because I want to make sure I'm getting the same treatment that an, an attendee would. Does the Wi-Fi work in there? Um, can I get phone reception? Does my laptop work? I mean, all those things you have to know, right? And you can only get them if you stay in the same type of room that your attendees would stay in. So, I always, like I said, I recommend that you stay, but I always recommend that you use or did you get a standard room like, like anyone else or the majority of the attendees would get. Number five, take a good look at the meeting space. Of course, you want to make sure you walk the meeting space, especially all the space that you'll be using. Remember the new um, protocols and COVID, some companies still want this, some don't where they want things spread out. Maybe instead of, you know, um, six people at a table, they only want four people at a table. So you want to make sure you have enough space for that because you're going to be using more space, right? You're going to be using less tables and more space. So, um, so I mean, more tables and more space. What am I saying? So do you want to make sure that, you know, that, that those things are taken care of as well? So, and it's going to come at an added cost. So we want to make sure you pass that along um, to your client, make sure that, he or she knows that, okay, we want it this way. Well, it's going to cost X amount of more dollars in order for you to do that. So number six, experience the F and B, just like you would experience the food. I mean, the, um, the room accommodations, you want to experience the food too. Now, mind you now, I'm plant-based or I call it non-meat eats. Okay. So I don't eat meat. I don't eat anything, anything like that. So basically I'm always looking for something, someone to be creative. Okay, a good way of seeing, regardless of what type of food you're eating, but in this case, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask for something plant-based and see how creative they are. That will give me an idea how creative they will be with anything. Okay, if I go in there and say, hey, I'm plant-based, but you don't have anything plant-based on your menu, can you make something for me? You know, and right away, that will tell you how creative they are or how creative they are not. Okay, I've been in situations where they would just throw, you know, they'll, well, we'll throw some, 
cauliflower, you know, unseasoned, you know, on a plate of rice with some teriyaki sauce on it. Well, what the hell is that? No, I don't, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for you to be creative and, and come up with something better than that. So experience the food and beverage, you have to, okay? Because especially where um, some clients want a more elevated F&B experience, and if you can't get that from their restaurant, then you probably can't get it you know, from their banquet. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I don't know, but I'm just saying. And number seven, check cell phone service and Wi-Fi. Okay, so wherever the guests will go or the client, the attendees, make sure the phone uh, Wi-Fi works everywhere you are, in the meeting room, uh, maybe by the pool, because regardless of what we think, uh, if they're in meetings, they're still going to be checking emails and, and text messages. So make sure the reception is working in each one of these areas the, by the pool maybe in the spa, in the restaurant, um, in the lobby, of course, in your guest room. And remember, the guest room Wi-Fi and the meeting room Wi-Fi are totally different, okay? So you want to make sure there's enough bandwidth in the meeting space to that's adequate for whatever you're going to be doing in that particular room. So, so that's it. I just wanted to come on live just for a couple minutes and share those quick little seven tips, things that I use, you know, when I'm doing a hotel site inspection. So you know, some other ones may differ. That's okay. Add to it. Take away from it. It's okay. It's just a starting point. So, but anyway, my name is Russell Edmond. I go by the name of Russell of Hotels. And remember, I have a podcast that's on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's called On Air with Russell of Hotels. So that's it for now. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this you know, resonates with someone and it's something that you can use. Uh, if not, uh, share it with somebody. All right. So you guys take care. Have a great day.